It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. They're learning how to shoot and learning how to light. Learning how to mic and edit right. These are TCTV's finest in training. Doing their best with focusing and framing. It's the TCTV Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. You're watching TCTV. It's the Training Show. The TCTV Training Show. They will get better. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Second Saturday, May 9th, 2015. We're going to be discussing Final Cut Pro Update 10.2. We've updated to 10.2. So uh, all of our computers here at TCTV are now on the 10.2. And if you have Final Cut at home, you can update to 10.2 for free. You just have to be on Yosemite. It won't work unless you're on the newest operating system. So. That's what this operating system is. It's Yosemite. That's why you see this mountain, which I assume is from Yosemite Park. I've never been there. But uh, so, so now we're on 10.2. And I want to show you first off the, the coolest thing about this new update is that they've done a new logo. Watch this. OK. Here comes a new logo. Look at that. It's different. Did you see it? See if, yep, okay. So you're gonna run into this command, this error here that says the library, whatever the library is, must be updated to work with this version of Final Cut Pro. So first off, you're gonna see this message. And if, if it's your first time opening your project, your library on Final Cut, on the new Final Cut, this is what's gonna happen. And all you need to do is click OK, all right? And you're gonna have to do it, you're gonna have to click OK. So I'm gonna click OK. And it's going to do this stuff, and then it's going to open up the project here. And there's the project it opened up. So now we have um, some stuff with missing media here. But there's me doing an older Second Saturday workshop, which I believe was on Photoshop. And so that project opened. And, and do you see, let me just shrink this down. What do you notice different in here about uh, the uh, the library here. Do you notice anything different, new? How about Smart Collections? Smart Collections is new. And uh, so that's going to show us, it's going to give us um, like different categories of, of footage that uh, it, it kind of makes itself. Like if there's any audio only clips, it puts those. It puts favorite clips if you have any favorites. Um, and then it's going to list your projects out. So that's helpful. So you can, this smart collection folder is going to apply to every event in that library. And I excuse the missing media here. Here, I'll open something that's not, well, that one's missing too because the graphic is missing. But anyway, um, the next thing you're going to notice about working in the new Final Cut 10.2 is when you import, the import uh, window uh, interface has been changed. So I want to show you that. So let's imagine. Let's go to the training show here, the training show library, and I can create a new event. And we'll call this, I don't know, test or something like that. So now we have an event called test here, and I'm going to input, I'm going to import footage to test. So the same thing, we use the little down arrow, or we can go to file, import, media. Either way, that's all still the same. But what looks different here is all the stuff on the right side. Do you see this? Does it look familiar at all? It used to be in a separate panel. It used to be in a separate window that would come up when you chose your footage. So let me show you here in, uh, I've got a folder here that we can maybe import stuff from. Where's, not users, staff two. Here we go, external media. All right, here's a bunch of clips from, let's say this, this, these clips from Miss Thurston County 2015. Let's see if these work. Oh, there's only two clips. OK. So for instance, if I was going to import these clips now, I can, I can navigate through them the same way. Although I think it's a little different, because I think they're actually having folders inside of folders now. You know, Does that look different down here? But anyway, so like if I, if I single click on. Uh, part one here, and I go to import it, 
you'll notice that all of those commands that would come up normally, they would come up in a window next after I clicked import select, and then it would show this other window. Well, now they're all on the right side here. So here's my commands, copy to library or leave files in place. So with, with this footage being on, on the hard drive already, I'd probably click leave files in place. And then I can add to the existing event or create a new event. And then I can do all the stuff where, um, you know, it analyzes for the video and audio and I have to, all that stuff. I, want, I don't want these things clicked. Not, yeah, I don't want those clicked. But anyway, you do that and then you go ahead and click import selected. And then it does its deal and it puts it in the event. Okay, and it probably added it to the smart collection. When I go to smart collection, all videos, yeah, there it is, see? It added it automatically to that. I'm gonna go out of this and I'm gonna show you the best part about this new update, which is the 3D text. You got 3D and 3D cinematic, okay? So 3D is just some, they look like this. They, they, they have some animation to them, some of them do. That one's not, that doesn't have an animation. This one's a lower third with a little bit of animation. There's a, an, another a rotate animation, a scale animation, a tumble animation, and a tracking animation. And then in cinematic, we have other things like, uh, we have these, these pre-made like intros and stuff that you could use. And here's a different one, and here's a different one, and there's a different one. And there's probably other things like uh, new, um, they always put new generators and stuff in here. So you might see some new things in the generators, although nothing comes out here. I think this one's new. That looks new to me. So that's a generator, which acts like a piece of video. But let's go back to 3D text, and we'll drop down some 3D text here. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back to 3D, and I'm going to grab the scale one. I'm going to drop scale down on top here. And so here we go, we've got scale 3D. And then uh, what we can do is we can change what it says by clicking on it, making it yellow like that. And we go up here into text and so where it says scale 3D, we want to say it something else like second Saturday, maybe. Let's do second. Yeah, like that, okay? So we do that and then we have um, some options here inside, uh, so some options in here that never were there before. For instance, you never had this thing called 3D text. And what that can do is if I go to it and I click depth and, and increase the depth, you're gonna see that it extrudes. You see it extruding? See, it only goes up to 100, but I can actually click this and then make it even go more. See, I can make it do that Superman thing. Boom, now it's a really deep letters, right? So there's our extrusion, and then, let's see if you can go negative. This is going to be new to me, but can we go negative? No, we can't go negative. Can you increase the depth without increasing the size? Well, it's not more? increasing the size. It looks like it's increasing the size because as it's increasing the depth, so it's just pushing it it's out. It's coming closer to okay. you. Yeah. So is it possible to go the other way, push it back? You can do exactly what you were asking, okay. just right. by changing the depth direction. Okay. So centered. So you just the depth direction was backwards instead of forward. Well, actually, it was centered, so it was going both ways. Okay. So when you do it, when you do it forward, it makes it bigger. It makes the letters come toward toward you. When you do it backwards, it makes the depth go backwards, and the yeah. and the letters stay the same. But centered does both, you know. So that's what that did. So it, here I'll show you for for backwards. Here we go backwards, and as we reduce this, those letters stay the same size. If we go forward and we increase it, those letters come toward you. If we go, you know, and then backwards is gonna make it go back again. So that's, that's the answer to that. And I think it defaults as centered, so it kind of does both. It goes forward and backwards. So the next thing we have is weight. Let's see what weight does. Oh, that's making your, your uh, text thicker. So that's a good thing to fine tune. And then you've got bevel. Do you guys know what bevel is? You heard what bevel, you know what bevel is? Let's, we've got bevel, and this is what our bevel looks like. We've got kind of, it makes, it makes the edges, and we're not gonna see it unless we really zoom in. So let's zoom this text in 
I'm going to go and scale it up. There we go. OK, so now you're going to be able to see this bevel. bevel. So here we go. We change the bevel. This is the bevel type that we're on. We're on normal bevel. Square is going to take those edges and just make it, that's regular. That's no bevel at all, really. And let's go to, um, let's change the bevel again. We got rounded. So that makes it look like it's round on the front. The bevel is only going to work on the front of the image. And then let's go to some of these other ones. There's a concave one, which gives you a little outline. So basically, it's kind of a little outline, right? Can uh, I change the color of the bevel? Yeah, oh, yeah. You can do all that. Let's go to groove. There's our groove. What else do we have? We've got square ring. OK, that makes kind of our letters hollow. Huh. Bevel ring. Gives it a bevel, but still makes them hollow. And then outline. Huh, I don't see anything on that one at all. But anyway, lots of options in there in just the beveling alone. There's our standard bevel, normal. And then let's move to what else do we have? We have font edge size. So that's our bevel adjustment to make the bevel more extreme or less extreme, you know? So let me change it to a different, the rounded bevel you can see. So as we change this, it's making it look, you kind of see it glossy a little bit. It's more glossy as I go up because of the beveling is making it round and then the lights interacting with that. And I think there's a way you adjust the lights for the 3D text too. But let's change the, uh, let's move down here on some of our 3D text options. Down here we have material, okay? This is where you're gonna open a whole world of stuff in here. Like right now we're on single material. We can change it to multiple material, and that's going to give us lots of different <laughs> options. Okay, so we can change the material of the front. We can change the material of the front edge, which is the bevel. Then we've got the sides, which are, you know, the extrusion parts. Then we've got the back edge, which I don't think you're going to see. And the back you don't see because we can't rotate it around fully. There's probably a way to rotate this thing. We're going to figure it out eventually. So right now, let's just go to, I'm going to make, let's keep this simple right now. I'm going to go to single. And so this is going to do the same material for everything, right? So let's see what our options under materials are. We well, fold that down and look at this. <laughs> you've got concrete, you've got fabric, you've got <laughs> grunge, metal, miscellaneous. Ooh, metal looks pretty. Let's try a chrome. Drop chrome on it. Now, there's our chrome text. Gold, gold, I want gold. The director wants gold. We'll change it to gold. Metal, where's the gold? There it is. Golden second Saturday. Now, if I change this to multiple, yeah. it's probably all, they're all gonna be set at gold, but we can change the side to be wood. We change the side to be, uh, bamboo. There we go. Now we have golden letters with bamboo extrusion. There you go. Of course, you can change all these other things. You can change the front edge, which is going to change your bevel. So if we did that to concrete, aged concrete, there. Okay, so now the only thing is gold is these middle parts because my, my uh, bevel is set up to be pretty extreme here. But if we changed our bevel a little bit uh, to regular bevel, there we go. Well, it's just because my this is turned up really high. So now we have gold letters there. And then we have concrete bevel. And then we have bamboo extrusion on the sides. Then we've got our gold, and, and I liked that. When we had the gold, I liked the, uh, the rounded bevel. So I'm going to go back and change this to the round bevel. Ooh, but we want it more drastic. There. Yeah, that's what we like. That. And now let's see what options are under gold. So under gold, you have shininess and thickness, and that's all you have. So, in, and you can change the, the, so this is giving me options within the metal category. So I can change the, change it to aluminum within here. There, it takes a little while. Another thing you sometimes notice about this uh, using 3D text is that um, the computers sometimes 
get mad at you if you start using 3D text and it gives you a warning and said this computer does not have the capabilities to do this and you can usually just say okay and it'll you, you can use it anyway this particular computer I don't know why it didn't tell me that so either this laptop is a faster computer than all the other computers in the building uh, but you may run into that little error message and I don't know what the consequences of, of answering okay anyway are <laughs> I don't know if it like if the, the image just isn't going to turn out as clear or if it's going to make it render slower or what I don't know what is going to be the problem if you go ahead and use 3d text anyway but apparently this computer can handle it so there was no problem there so back to our metal options we got our shininess you can bring our shininess down or I can bring it up there it's a lot shinier can you okay so we're still under materials and all of our options under materials I can change that to another let's let's go back to stone and change it to flat so I think flat whoa you got gradient look at that their flat has no like it doesn't even show you where the where the extrusion begins or where the it just does everything so what was the basic again how do we get to generic is that basic okay so generic is basic and when we went up here we went to basic and then we went to generic now you can change that to, to a solid color like right now it's white and to change the color you click on the color and you can use this color wheel to change it to whatever color chartreuse what color is chartreuse is it like a beige i don't know you just said a word you didn't even is this it? Intensely strong yellow green. That looks like chartreuse to me. No, no, more yellow green. Real, highly. Yellow green, huh? Yeah, highly saturated. But it's, green. but it's really light. Oh, you're getting close. Yeah, that's pretty close. More bright. All right. Well, let's go with this yellow then. All right, so <coughs> you've got you got a solid color, and then you got a gradient, and it looks like it has a little grayed out version uh option called image and i don't know why it's grayed out but i would imagine you can drop an image down on your text instead of using these options but i don't know how you get that to not be grayed out but so here's a gradient to change the gradient you fold down gradient and then you can change this color here by going to color first you click on it then you click on color then we can click on blue so that's the lower end of our gradient, and here's the higher end of our gradient. We'll change that to red. There we go. So now we have this, and we can change the middle point of that gradient to be closer over there or closer over here. Kind of we need to do that to get it to show up. Can you choose different kinds of gradients? Like radial? Let's see if we linear. can change, a different, change the gradient. Can you make a rainbow gradient? You can probably add more points to this. Let me see. There probably is a way. There usually is. Oh, I just did it. I don't know what I did. So I just added another point. Let's see. Okay, you double click on the gradient inside here, but on the, on the bottom line. You see how this, I, I double click on the top line, it doesn't work. The very, very top line is your alpha, I believe. But this bottom line here, if you double click on it, it creates another point. So then we can change the color to that. We can change the color to this. And we can, yeah, we can make a rainbow. Yeah. Okay. The type is radial now. So now the center of that is, is this part of the gradient. So, and then the location. Ooh. And of course, you know that you can animate all of this, right? Okay, so what I just did here, this glyph there, what that's doing is it's putting the gradient on each individual letter all right and then instead of the whole word that did the whole word this changes it to the gradient is on every letter so and then our brightness and opacity so we're still under the selection for material and then beyond that we have our traditional options which are glow and drop shadow those have always been available to you they're not new. The new section here is under this called materials here. If I hide it, 
There it goes. Oh, we've, so we've got lighting, which we haven't looked at yet. Let's go to lighting. So we've got a lighting. Here we can change the lighting by just clicking on one of these. Here's lighting from below. Look at that. See, that did something interesting with the beveling, with the lighting from below. So, and then you can reduce the intensity of the light, but you wouldn't get much like, oh, and you can go all the way up to thousands. Look at that. And then go way down to zero, go all the way up to thousands. Now, okay, let me tell you about saving presets. That's something different, okay? All right, so let's move on to, uh, we're gonna move on from um, the, the 3D text. We've gone over smart collections, the import interface, the new logo, but save custom presets was another thing that was on my list to teach you about. And what that means is like, for instance, let's say, let's say this clip of me here doing Second Saturday is, I wanted to put some effects on that. Let's say I went here and I dropped uh, an effect here, one of these effects, 50s TV show. We dropped that on there, so now we got black and white. And then let's show you about color correction. The color corrector now is, it used to just be an option up here in the, in the um, inspector. Well now, it's no longer in there, I don't believe, yeah, it's gone. Now the color corrector is down here in the filters with everything else. So you have to actually drag the color corrector on there. And what happens is, it allows you to uh, like layer them and move to, like I can move the color corrector above the 50s TV effect, and that's gonna create different like uh, effects from it. So let's, I can move the color corrector underneath the 50s effect, well, we gotta drag it and move it under there. So what that's gonna do is when I go to the color board and I bring up the green, see, this is a perfect example. So right now, because we've got the black and white filter on top of the color corrector filter, then um, it makes it black and white, then it makes it green. But if I go back here and I reverse that, I move this color corrector above 50s TV, then first it makes it green, then it makes it black and white, so the, the result is different. Does that make sense? So beforehand you couldn't do that because the color corrector was built into the inspector a certain way. Now it's turned into a filter. So your color corrector is now a filter that you can layer according to you know how you need to do it. Now if we wanted, for instance, let's go back to this color corrector and I make it real green, I make it, you can see that this is doing something to the 50s TV effect. So let's turn off the 50s TV effect. And so I made it really green and now most of it's green except for me that pops out because I've got the red shirt on. So that's gonna make it look different. It, that's why it makes it look darker everywhere when we put this 50s TV. Um, now, what other ability, effect can I layer to make an effects preset? Now I have the ability to make like a mask, so if How I about want blur? to make a mask of that table top, Oh, we need to learn masks too. Blur, let's drop blur in there. I gotta drop it onto the clip there. Okay, so now we got blur on there. I don't know if this will change anything if I layer it differently. It looks like it does. So let's move the blur down though. Let's use a radial blur instead. Use this radial, radial blur. Come on, radial blur, drop it on the clip. There we go, okay. So now we can take that radial blur and we're gonna change the centering of it to be, there we go, right there, okay. And let's reduce the amount a little bit. Okay, so now everything's like radial blur around me. Let's say for some reason I like that effect and I wanna use it on every piece of video in every project that I ever do, okay? So to do that, I click Save Effects Preset. You see that down here? And when I do that, it's gonna ask me where do you wanna put it and what do I wanna to add to that preset? Do I want all of these effects? Yes. Well, do I want transform? Let's say I made it grow. Let's say I made the image bigger, I scaled it up. And let's say I rotate it or, or I can click this and make all of those attributes part of this effect. So if there's cropping involved, if there's scaling, transform, I can, I can turn the cropping on, I can turn the distortion on, 
Anything that I did to that, I want to make sure I check, okay? And then when, I, when I'm done here, I want to name this. And where do I want to put it? So let's call it uh, Robert's, Robert's filter, all right? And then where do I want to put it? Do I want to put it in basics? Do I want to put it in blur, color, distortion, keying, lighting? Which folder of effects do I want to do it? Or do I want to call it a new category? And I'm going to create a new category, and I'm going to call it um, custom. Custom effects. So now we're going to add it to custom effects. And so when I create that, it actually creates a folder. Watch this. There. I created a folder in my effects here. Here's my effects called custom. And there it is, Robert's filter. So I can, I can add this filter in any clip. So now the only thing that this is going to cause trouble with is if you do this and you create a custom effect or a, a, an effect preset, then it's probably only going to be stored on this computer that I'm working on here. You know, to get it to move to other computers, I don't know. I haven't, we haven't figured that out yet. This is brand new. So I don't know where it saves it, but it's probably not going to be saved to your project or your library. It's probably going to be saved to the computer you're using. So instance, you're editing on Buttercup, you create a save effects preset, that's probably going to only exist on Buttercup. Unless we can figure out, you know, we can probably track it down if it's really important to you. But anyway, at least you can do it and then you can add it to all of your, um, I'm, and then the other question is, the question mark is if you use these, this Robert's filter and then we take my project and we put my hard drive on a different computer, will that filter work? I don't know. It might. But and how do you import the filter? How do you import? That's the, the question that we'll have to someplace else. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to fight with it on that. But anyway, um, theoretically, you're always going to use the same computer. It's going to work fine. One more new thing about this that I want to go over before we have to wrap up is the mask. Okay, the mask is fun. Let's go to this clip here and let's say we're going to take me out and we're going to put some other kind of. Let's put something underneath me, like a. Uh, like uh, some clouds, what what uh, what looks good? What background? How about that that one I thought that was new? This intersect one mm -hmm. that looks new. I'm gonna drop that down on the clip underneath me, and of course you can't see me because I'm not I don't have a chroma key enabled on this clip, right? It's not chroma keyed, so we're gonna go to a filter that's called masks. This is new. Okay, so you've got different masks here. You've got the vignette mask. We put that on there. Then we can see the, uh, I think we used to have a vignette mask. The one that's new is the draw mask, okay? So the draw mask, we drop that on there, and now we're able to draw, let me see how does this work, effects. Click to add a control point. Click there, click there. What's, there we go. We're just clicking, we're clicking, we're clicking along my shoulders, clicking up in my hair. If I shift click, do I get a bezier? You can do, bev yeah, it does a bezier. I don't know if it's a shift clip or what, but you can do bezier um, curve on these points. But I don't know if I need to. Right now I'm just cutting myself out. And I think you can actually just there you go, you got smooth. There you go, that's how you do it. You right click on the point, okay. and then you can rotate it like so. And we can go here, and we've got the iPad, we'll get the iPad in the shot, we'll get my finger in the shot, and we'll go down here. And then when we connect this, there you go. I'm all masked out. So now I can make myself, you know, rotate. I can do, I can do a rotation on this clips too. So like, you know, I can scale it up like so. You know, I can do things like rotate, rotate myself around in a circle. Dan's gonna like this because he can do spinny heads. We have to end it right now. So um, I want to thank you for joining us on this second Saturday workshop. Joining us next month, join us next month in June, and we're gonna have a workshop on YouTube and how to navigate the YouTube interface and everything. So.